In a world across with mobility and displacement, fictional narratives of migration play a major role in raising awareness and sympathy. Uh, but this is certainly not the only role they can or should perform. The task of redefining this genre, which is alternatively called diasporic immigrant or migrant literature, um, among other identifiers, requires a model that would be able to encompass a large range of uh, novels that um, often recount a quest in search of a better life. Define. Oh, sorry. I I'm really struggling with that. <laughs> Defining the borders of migrant novel um, offers the added benefit of transcending established categorizations, making room for more helpful categories, and um, letting us comprehend the nuances of this abandoned mode uh, of writing. In this project, we examine whether the migrant novel fits into the category of what Andrew Piper has termed a conversional novel. Uh, based on St. Augustine's Confessions and by analyzing the changes in linguistic patterns in the course of uh, a novel, um, is it working? Yeah. Restart. Okay. Ah, perfect. Um, so uh, Piper's proposed model seeks to determine if um, somewhere through us a novel, a conversion takes place, a structure in which narration is marked by a strong sense of before and after, by a singular sense of temporal difference. I, uh, our hypothesis is that the conversional moment uh, may occur somewhere upon contact, uh, coming into contact with the new land. However, this is certainly not the uh, case in our, our, uh, all the novels in our corpus, uh, especially because they do not necessarily recount the migration process in a chronological manner. Um, and also there are novels by second generation immigrants who experience uh, the hardships, the trauma and the pain associated with migration vicariously through their parents rather than uh, going through them uh, themselves. Uh, for the purpose of this study, we decided to focus on a body of migrant narratives consisting of 150 uh, contemporary Anglophone novels, the list of which was extracted from the Penguin Book of Migration Literature, which is a, a global anthology of fiction, poetry, and essay on uh, migration. Uh, the advantage of the list featured in this anthology is that while being Anglo-centric, it covers a lot of fictional uh, migration trajectories. As a starting point, we focus uh, on a subcorpus of 15 novels published in the 21st century uh, that have Canada as a destination of uh, migration. So the original data in the, in the anthology only included the title and the author, not uh, even the year of publication, so we collected uh, some uh, metadata. Uh, in our approach to uh, genre classification, we are mainly focused on linguistic patterns through the course of the novel, yet in our reading of the novels, we also have Raymond Williams' understanding of genre as embedded in social language. Um, as um, Christoph Schuch argues, adopting a genre theory for a computational text analysis raises the question of whether genres manifest themselves as inherently textual properties of text or whether they are rather, uh, rather socially constructed phenomena. Uh, our approach entails uh, a mixed methodology of distant reading and close reading, which has been named different names by uh, different uh, scholars, such as computational hermeneutics, uh, scalable reading, etc. But uh, what all these methods have in common is a special emphasis on close reading in addition to uh, reading the text. Uh, quantitatively and engaging with them rather than reducing them to data and generalizing. Um, also suggesting a circular approach and an iterative uh, process. Uh, the complexity uh, and the intricacies of uh, the migrant and the migrant problem requires moving past mere quantitative analysis. Um, in fact, uh, as Rubika Reesom states, even the fact of portraying the migrant as a problem is problematic. Therefore, relying solely on distant reading uh, would equal reducing migrant novel, uh, novels uh, to numbers and 
figures. As a first step, we experimented with TFIDF and sentiment analysis. In the first approach, we segmented the novels into equal parts, calculated and compared the sum of TFIDF for each section to see if the cumulative new work usage goes through a considerable change through the course of the novel. Then um, compared uh, the novels together to detect the most noticeable uh, pattern anomalies in uh, our subcorpus, which was kind of non-existent, the uh, animals. Uh, but in the second uh, approach, uh, we used sentiment analysis to identify instances of highly negative or positive emotional in the corpus, which may or may not be indicative of conversional moments. There are several ways, of course, to perform sentiment analysis, but we decided to go with the NLTK library and the Vader uh, sentiment analyzer. Um, Vader is usually used for uh, shorter texts uh, and uh, analyzing social media um, posts, but uh, because it has a very limited dictionary of 7,500 words, but what we considered it a reasonable first step for sentiment analysis. Um, so I'm going to spare you the details of this and jump to the discussion. Uh, so we are beginning to see some patterns uh, in the sentiment arc of uh, these novels. Um, so in this part, uh, we're heavily influenced by um, Catherine's, uh, Catherine Elkin's work on the shape of stories based on their uh, sentiment arcs. Um, the close reading process is still under the way, uh, as I mentioned, it is a major part of uh, our process. Um, but as an example, we have here Cockroach by uh, Lebanese Canadian author Robbie Hodge uh, that shows a sudden leap in the sentiment arc um, towards the ending. Uh, so by reading the novel, we uh, kind of noticed that this could be related to dealing with uh, a past trauma and moving towards healing. In this case, the narrator, after um, avoiding talking about his pre-migratory trauma, finally opens up to his bewildered uh, psychiatrist and talks about how he inadvertently led to his sister's death during uh, the Civil War and uh, had to flee uh, the country. Sorry for the spoiler if you haven't read the novel. Uh, in this way, he's uh, finally able to come to terms with his past and possibly work through his trauma. While this does not indicate a trauma uh, that in, uh, a traumatic memory could be dealt with and forever forgotten, it could hint at a possible pattern in migration narratives where the uh, narrator works through uh, their trauma and moves towards healing. Uh, so one of the advantages uh, of this model is that it lets us define and redefine our model in each step, thus resulting in a step-by-step -step process towards uh, defining the genre of migration novel. Uh, since this pattern of trauma of uh, as silence and healing as narration is uh, detectable already in some of these novels, we are currently thinking about going another way and maybe modeling trauma through sentiment analysis. Uh, because with the current approaches to sentiment analysis, there is no room for accounting for context or uh, even for metaphorical language. Uh, so it couldn't be helpful in that regard, but we are still thinking of bridging uh, literary theory and um, sentiment analysis. So as I mentioned, this project could even go into a completely um, different um, digression. Uh, uh, direction and hopefully we can eventually come up with subgenres of migration novel that are uh, more helpful than existing uh, categories and hopefully our model lets us detect common threads in uh, novels not previously associated together and define subgenres for an omnipresent uh, type of narrative in contemporary literature. But uh, more on that next year. Thank you. <laughs>